the first wave of robots is upon us and ready for a place in your home or office. After all, who doesn't want a cool robot on their desk or under the tree this year? Reality Robotics has launched their remote-controlled Bureau Robot for purchase via Kickstarter. It moves, it jives to a beat, plays music, or says what you record to say. Best of all, you can control it from your Android or Apple device. Michael Trzeszewski, founder of Reality Robotics, is next on Crowded Places. Hi everyone, I'm Curtis Hollister and welcome to Crowded Places, the show that profiles crowdfunded projects and the people behind them. Joining me to talk about his recently launched Kickstarter project, an innovative remote-controlled robot called Biro, is Michael Trzeszewski, founder of Reality Robotics. Michael, welcome to the program. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. Well, and thanks so much for joining us from Hong Kong. It's great to see, uh, it, it's great for you to uh, be participating in the show from such a remote location. You know, First, right off the bat, you guys have launched this Kickstarter project. What is Bureau and what can this thing do? Well, Bureau, we, we've dubbed it as the ultimate smartphone companion. Our vision of Bureau was to have a robotic toy that's controlled by your smartphone. So what we've done is we put all the processing into the phone so Bureau can listen to what the phone tells it to do and react to it. So what Bureau has, it has a system on a chip which handles the Bluetooth communication and all the routines on the board itself to control the motors, the LED lights, the sound files, the playback. So we basically, it's kind of like a DOS, like an operating system that we put onto Bureau. The smartphone now connects to Bureau, does all the processing, and tells Bureau what to do. And our thinking behind that was, is the same way a lot of things being offloaded to the cloud for processing, to give it to, to more processor-intensive processor resources like big server farms, we thought that in relation to Bureau, the phone is a server farm. It can do a, a lot more things and calculations than Bureau can do, and that helps Bureau save battery life, and, uh, and basically be more fun. Um, and the reason also our thinking too was we made the, the app open source was so, so that pure, people can have more fun programming Bureau. So you can basically see how things have been done, how the code has been written, and then when you get your own Bureau, connect to it and uh, write your own software and have some fun with it. So um, Bureau really can do a lot of things that your phone can do because it has upgradable firmware inside. And so as people get creative with the apps, you can then really make Bureau do some fun stuff because it's, it's kind of unlimited to, to what Bureau can do at this point. Now, you launched this on Kickstarter, um, which is a crowdfunding platform. Maybe you can just give a little bit of background or for some people that might not be familiar with what Kickstarter is and how that's working for you guys to basically get pre-orders for uh, a project like Be The Robot or Bureau. Okay, so Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform where you basically pre-sell the product before it exists. You uh, put up a project for a certain amount of days and you hope to raise a certain amount of money. Those are two, fix you can't, there's two things you can't change within your campaign. So um, once our goal was 38900 and our campaign was for 33 days. Kickstarter recommends campaigns for under 30 days, and in terms of the money you want to raise, it's up to you. I mean, in our case, uh, you know, we've, we picked 38900 and 33 days because we thought that's reasonable for what we can raise. Mm -hmm. um, in actual fact, we need, to, we need about $100,000 to put beer into production. So... You know, we've we put in our own money into this project. Uh, we've already paid for a lot of things like tooling. Uh, you know, we bought PCBs. We've been purchase orders for motors, electronic components. So right now, we're spending our own money in anticipation of basically being able to sell this product on Kickstarter for Kickstarter to help fund the first pre-production run to help us get this thing to the market. Now, somebody, um, somebody that wants to buy this on Kickstarter, basically they go like, wow, this is cool. I love the idea of having kind of the first access or being kind of the first people to, to get this, first mover. Um, what's it going to cost them to get one of these things? Well, the Bureau's range in price depends on their on their abilities. We have the first ones for $35, which is just a little uh, you know injection molded plastic figure that you can put on your desk. It's the same size as Bureau with no components inside it. And then if you go to 79, you can, it's Bluetooth controllable, it drives around, plays back sound files, has some LED lights. Um, once you go up to 109, 129, at 109 you have arm control and the head moves around. At 129, the, the headphones light up to sound, so when Bureau hears sounds, the headphones will light up and it'll just, it'll, it'll, it'll pulse to be the music. And then once you get up to 159 and 189, you get the limited editions, which are in silver, and then we have actual gold-plated one at 189. 
And uh, the beauty of these ones is that uh, you know they navigate by themselves, so you can play your desk and drive around by itself. You can also move side to side and kind of dance. So um, it does uh, it does some neat features for that price point. Which is, I mean, very cool, right? I mean, from the point of view of like what you can now have on your iPhone or your Android phone, the ability to kind of just just have this gadget that you're you're playing with. If you've got kids, they're going to be all over this. But I mean, in the office, it seems like just the perfect kind of tool to be, uh, you know, just fun hijinks. And that's what it really is for. I mean, it, it basically it lives on your desk. Bureau lives on your desk. You know, it's four inches tall. It's perfect size. You know, to, to be in that same desk environment beside your coffee cup. You know, it's Bluetooth controlled, which means it's connected to your phone. So if you get a notification on your phone, Bureau can react to it. You can have uh, later on. You can send Twitter te- t- strings to Bureau. Um, so Bureau can react to those. I mean, it, it, it can sit there for four or five hours just hanging out, and you can always plug it in to keep it charged, and it can still move around or react while it's plugged in. So, and and so people that do order order the so basically, and they get this from seventy five to one hundred fifty dollars, they can they can get one of these things that does quite a bit of stuff. When will they get it if they order it? So right now, with uh, the aggressive schedule we've set for ourselves, we're going to be shipping these products in in, in late November, early December. Um, currently, we'll be producing. I'm guessing around 300 units based on the on the um, funding level, um, and it's going to take about two weeks to do the production. And you know, so far, we're looking like we're right on track. So we'll be shipping out by courier and then registered mail by uh, early December. So people can have this for under the Christmas tree. Is really what it comes down to. I think that's a, that's, that's, that's a great that's our goal for under the Christmas tree. We're really really working hard to, to to keep that goal. So and I think that's one of the great things. I mean, you just can't get this product anywhere else other than through Kickstarter right now. You cannot. It's not available anywhere else, no. Now, uh, you know, when I look at the videos that are on your website and on your Kickstarter profile on the pages, I mean, there's a lot of engineering that's gone into this. Maybe you can just give a little bit of a background on the journey that you and the, the project team has has gone through to, to bring this thing to market. Okay, so Bureau first started in early 2011, in February. We started looking at, uh, you know, making a, a, a Google Bug Droid mascot as our video show in the beginning. Uh, we thought we're making a little animated robotic toy that would basically animate the anime with your phone, dance with your smartphone, and just something as a little companion. I mean, I've been doing robotic toys for over eight years. I've worked with some big companies on various robotic toys. I've been doing engineering and production and product design, product engineering, working with vendors, factories, component sourcing, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, having that uh, under my belt in order to develop Bureau, what we've done is the most important thing in toy design is, first of all, you got to find some gearboxes that fit. you got to basically make the engineering, the design, and everything work around what you can access. So, you know, there's a lot of times where people work with things that are, you know, hobby grade and, and off the shelf and hobby market, but for production, these things are non-ideal because you can't source them. I mean, they're not producing large enough quantities for you to get them. So we made Bureau non-hobby, fully production ready, which means the components we use can be bought in the millions. You know, we can, you know, these things are produced and used in other, other, other toys and other accessories. So from our, our motors, we basically found a high-end uh, motor manufacturer with gearboxes, self-contained, we then have to find the batteries, and based on the motors and the batteries, we start designing the engineering so we can fit all these things inside. So I spent, mm. me and my team spent a lot of time in CAD for about three or four months flipping things around. We did some uh, rapid prototypes. We did some first CNC shells. We tested the functions and just in constant refinement of, you know, will the electronics fit? And the electronics won't fit. And we have to ch- change the size a little bit. And then how do you get the motors in? How do you get the function in? It's just been a constant evolving process. So where, th- you know, this isn't some crappy. Yeah, this isn't some crappy, poorly designed toy. Then you guys have put a lot of design and engineering into making sure this thing can run. It's been about a year and a half of of, of, of a lot of tweaking, a lot of uh, changing, a lot of you know, a lot of development, of software, hardware, firmware, electronic development. So it's been a kind of ongoing process, and we uh, we want to launch it uh, around the iPhone five release and just in time for Christmas for this year. So. Well, I think that's great. I mean, from the point of view of robotics, I mean, anybody that's thinking about robots and, and uh, like robotics, I mean, it's always been this kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, flying cars kind of concept when we think that we actually see robots of the future, the Jetsons and so forth. You know, what is, what is the commercialization of these kinds of things? Is this the first wave? Like, what role is r- robotics and robots going to play within our homes and offices in the future from, you know, your perspective as an expert? Well, for, from my perspective, I see that robots are already around us. I mean, what we, you know, in some ways, robot by a true definition is, is something to replace human labor. It comes from Czech, the word robota, which is actually with doing work. Um, so we've seen robots, you know, in the, in the car automation industry, for example, in the assembly of cars, robots are used throughout. Um, a lot of production departments use robots for various tasks. Um, and in the homes, I'd say that the, the robots that are around us the most are vacuum cleaners. 
That's what I oh, think as well. Yeah, I imagine the vacuum yeah. that little round vacuum cleaner that kind of just zips around your house in perpetuity. Yeah, you don't think about it, but it's it's self intelligent. It's it's aware of where it's it's kind of aware of its surroundings. It knows where your cat is. It knows where your stairs are. At least the better ones do. And uh, you know, it, it's it's a robot. And then uh, you know, things are going to come out uh, to us. You know, there's going to be much more robots around us with. Uh, Especially the smartphones coming out. The smartphones doing what they can do. Um, I see robotics as being extension of your smartphone. Same as me, bureau. And that once you have a smartphone, you can leave it in your house. Or once it becomes essentially disposable, where there's a lot of smartphones around, you can use that and plug it in as a brains to a robot and have the robot do certain things based on the, the apps the smartphone uh, can, can can be downloaded to the phone. I mean, if you guys, uh, given that, I mean, you're going to be successful with this initial launch with uh, with bureau. But I mean. You guys have a lot of possibilities. When I, I see this product, I mean, I see a lot of like major brands kind of wanting to be, I mean, what brand doesn't want to be on someone's desktop with in some way, fashion or form? Like, you know, like you said, the Android mascot. I, I definitely see like R2-D2 uh, version of that. Like what? Well, who wouldn't want the R2-D2 version of this? Or these guys that like uh, the whole industry around bobbleheads. I mean, right. um, the ability to have a robot that you can drive around with a bobblehead of either uh, a famous person or one that you have of yourself or someone in uh, that's in the office. I mean, you got like a lot of potential with this. Where do you where do you expect to take it in the next year or two? Well, we're uh, we're going to be showing it at CES, the Tronic Show, in, in 2013 in Vegas. Uh, we've already got some we've got somebody lined up who we're working with to, to be at, at the show. Uh, we're going to see we're going to see some new uh, new iterations of beer at the show. Some new variations we're doing right now. Um, in terms of R2D2, in terms of the Google Bug Droid, um, I love to make both of them, but they require licensing. So I think once we uh, get Vero out there in its current embodiment, we're going to talk to licensors and see what kind of deals we can make to, uh, to make an R2D2 and make the Google Bug Droid and various other little you know, smartphone type accessories that are you know, compact and can live on your desk. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that you I think you really got something here, and it's just I mean, it's the first iteration of it. It's very cool. You guys have put a lot of work into making sure that this is a solid piece of equipment. That if people buy it, they're they're gonna have something they can play with for quite a while. Uh, Michael, where can people find you online? Uh, I say the best way to find me online, Curtis, is uh, is through. Uh, I can be found on LinkedIn. Uh, you can just type in my name to LinkedIn to find me. Also uh, on the Be the Robot Facebook site is a good place. And I'll start the email address at the bottom of our Be The Robot website that can also be reached. Perfect. So if you'd like to be one of the backers and get your own remote-controlled robot, visit kickstarter.com and search for Bero. That's B-E-R-O. I'm Curtis Hollister, and thanks for watching Crowded Places.